This week we're going to have a look at the Warren wing sail rig. It's something we get asked a lot about. It's a very efficient rig. It does have some cons and we'll look at those as well. Right now what we're going to do is set up the foresail and the mainsail on the two masts here and attach the bridles. One major advantage of this rig is the ability to just drop the sail to the deck if a sudden squall comes up from behind. There is no need to turn broadside onto the wave and luff up as you do with a conventional rig. It's not only a great safety feature, but also lets us leave full sail up at night time, unlike many boats that put a reef in before nightfall and travel more slowly as a consequence. So we'll start with the main sail and we'll attach the sail to the gaff. First of all, gaff of course being at the top of the sail, you can see the jaws here that go around the mast. They've got some PTFE or uh, UHMWPE uh, pads in there to make them slide easily up and down the mast. There's a retaining belt on the front there just to stop the gaff from slipping away from the mast when you're raising and lowering the sail. So I'll just take the uh, halyard restraints off to stop them slapping against the mast. And that'll free up the halyards and we can thread them down where they belong down the back of the, uh, the gap here and the back of the, the jaws. There's two halyards on the uh, gaff sail. You have the throat halyard. For us it's this black one that attaches uh, put the gaff up the right way. Attaches to this loop here and that raises and lowers the luff of the sail and then we have a bridle which is attached to the midpoint and towards the end of the gaff down there we'll pop that in in a minute and that's the peak halyard that tweaks up the gaff and puts tension on the leech of the, of the sail under here we've got the two rope clutches just release those and i just noticed that we uh, we've actually got the main sheet system attached to the traveller and also attached to the peak halyard there at the aft end of the boat so I'll just detach that. So this is now free uninterrupted straight to the halyard block at the top of the mast. We'll tie that off so we don't lose it. We used to use snap shackles on all the halyards until they let go and then we went back to the old tyre bowline for all of our halyard attachments. In the middle of the night, you don't want a halyard letting go. It ends up going up the mast, and then uh, and the situation that happened to us is I had to go up the mast to, to get it down at about two o'clock in the morning. Now we can take this out from here, all the way out through the rope clutches, re-reeve it through the space in the uh, gaff boom. Figure of eights in the end, of course, so you don't lose them. Let's make sure we don't have any twists. Looks good, no twists. Straight down through the rope clutch here. We're going to attach the other end of the main halyard, the throat halyard, to the, uh, the forward end of the gaff. Very low tech, no stainless, nothing in here, just line on line. Easy to see if there's any wear, wear occurring, can't say I've ever seen any wear. This is original Halyard, seven years old, same with this. We just use a one to one system on our Halyard, uh, the plans call for two to one but it's not really required, the sails are small enough to be able to pull up all the way to the 
the top the only reason we use the winches out here outboard these are the jib winches but we just take them through this turning block out here just for the peak halyard to tweak up the the gaff to get the leech tension right to be honest i don't know which is the main and which is the foresail they're not labeled uh, there's a couple of identifying bits of rope on which one is which but i'd have to unroll them to find out but i think a quick way to work it out will be to pick them up and see which one weighs the most because the main is slightly bigger than the foresail good idea Ooh, there's not much in it <laughs> Can't tell the difference. Before we put the sail on the gaff, we'll attach the forward anchor point for the bridle. Just put it up through the hole in the gaff, bring it down aft. So as we thread the sail on, we've got the other end of the bridle in our hand. We can then put it back and tie the last one over the top of the sail once the sail's on the gap. You can see the, uh, the top edge of the, the main sail here has a cutaway there for the bridle to come out and then another cutaway here for the bridle to go back through and we just rotate the gaff around and tie the stopping off under the gaff and then we've got our bridle in place. Remembering to put the pulley on first and that's the out haul for the gaff. Generally you set these a bit looser than you might expect. You don't tighten them right up because it tensions as the sail has got up a full hoist. down through there in a moment. Make these a fairly snug fit because they're epoxy lined holes drilled out to 10 mil and then filled with resin and then re-drilled again at seven and a half mil to take the to take the line here. Maybe it's all the way through. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Just a simple figure of eight, stop or not, underneath. All right. Sure, that's not going to come undone. It'll be tight as a drum after a bit of tension gets on this thing. That's it. And that is the makeup of the bridle. got an outhaul on the uh, head of the sail here to come through this hole at the back here. I won't tension that just yet, we'll get everything set up at the front end first at the luff. Alright, so here's the tricky bit, how do you get the mast into the luff or the sleeve of the sail? And of course there's a zip that starts at the bottom of the sail, foot. And that goes all the way to the head of the sail. So we unzip that in order to get the sail around the mast. And as a backup, in case the zip fails, we haven't had an issue with ours, but in case the zip did fail, every meter or every four feet or so, there are these safety straps inside the sleeve of the sail. They just clip together, a little locking device goes on over the top to stop them rubbing against the mast and stop them becoming disengaged. So half a dozen of those all the way up. Quite a clever invention by James Warham and Hanukkah Boone who pioneered this sail. Based on the Dutch gaff I believe, and, but with their own modifications in order to get the, uh, the wing sail design which is fantastic for um, reducing drag you know there's no uh, drag behind the mast it's perfect laminar flow around the mast on both sides all right so now that's the sleeve all opened up right there so there's a good uh, 
good meter or more of cloth that wraps around the mast. So the next thing is to put these straps on that hold the head of the sail up against the leading edge of the gaff. So when you're raising and lowering the gaff, the sail is fixed firmly to the gaff. The halyards go down in the, inside the sail. First strap going on there. Hooks up over the jaw. Sits straight behind the mast. That's one side on. And then the sail will go round the mast. AOS antenna in the way here, we'll just pop that up. The sail goes around the mast, around the halyards. Things will get a little easier, we'll start hoisting the gaff as we uh, pull the sail up and zip it up around the mast as we go. There's the other side going on, the other jaw. So, now that can go on around the mast. So we wrap around the, the mast and then come around this side to meet up with the other half of the zip on the other side. So that's started now. Now we can hoist that up a wee, a wee ways, give ourselves some space under here to start finishing the job off. Halyard's attached, nice and straight, no twists. No twists. All good. Now we can put the gaff on. What I'll do is just tighten up the outhaul on the gaff a little bit. So like I say, not real tight. Because when the gaff itself peaks up at the top of the, of the hoist, that's when the tension stretches out from the luff of the, the front edge of the mast right to the back. It's quite noticeable that if you tighten it first while it's like this, it'll get very tight up the top and you'll end up with horizontal creases running along, stretching the sail and not doing any good for anything really. So it's a bit of a judgment call, but you just get it so it's, I guess, just tight, but no tension on it. Here we go. This is what I mean when I say that the Warham sails are a bit of a toy, even on a 38 footer. Look at these light lines that are used to attach everything. So simple, so strong, and all just done with a couple of simple knots. You compare that to uh, perhaps other rigs with stainless steel hardware and mm. blocks and all sorts of expensive gadgets. And this rig drives us along, we can bank on, when we plan trips, 135 miles a day, just a fraction under six knots. That's what we work on when we do our planning around weather, and it's a pretty respectable average speed. Obviously we have good days and bad days, but generally that figure of 135 knot miles a day is, um, works out about right. Okay, that's it. She's ready to roll now. Twist. Once again, just a bowling straight onto the the block. Like so. Okay. Now it's starting to feel like a sailboat. So the key with hoisting any gaff sail is to bring the gaff up horizontal before peaking it up. If you peak it up it will lock and you won't be able to hoist or drop the sail, so you need to raise and lower it with the gaff horizontal. It's just a matter of feel really, you can feel there's just tension arrived on both of those together and then just pull them together. It is, mate. Good stuff. Right, so uh, now we can start zipping up the luff. You can see the halyards just coming down inside the luff. Right, 
right at the top there is the first of the safety uh, belts there. Better. There we go. So that's how they come together. They're quite tricky little things. It's like one of those puzzles. And then this black webbing just sleeves over the top to stop any damage against the mast or the sail from the metal fitting. Right. And just sits like that. That's it. And just so things don't undo. I'll do is just drop that sail down a bit so I'm not stretching. Just so the zip doesn't undo, we can this off the top. Just take a little bit of the tension off that zipper join there. Mm. Very simple, clever trick. Jekyll's the sail makers work with James and Hanukkah to design all these little nuances to the making them work. You can see there would have been a lot of trial and error involved. But now other sail makers have just copied it so. Okay. Last of the belts, last of the zip. And I'll just give it up to full hoist and tie that on. Lower than horizontal. That's, that's all right. Leave it yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Right. There yeah. you go. Makes a lot easier. Alright. You alright? Out there. It's not rocket science. Full hoist of the gaff going up there, you can see the gaff going up, I'll just peak it up. Perfect. So that's it without any sheets on of course, but uh, you get the idea, I hope. Yeah, that's it, that's it. That good? Yeah, looks good to me. We didn't have to backtrack on anything, I'm happy about that. And to drop it, it's just the opposite. So we lower the peak halyard first, just get that gap horizontal, thereabouts. About there. Then release the throat halyard as well and let them both go down together. Luff normally needs a bit of help from the front. 
and that's it you can see the essence of the sail there it just comes down in a big sock let it out a bit more well we can yeah we got the telltales red and green on both sides of the sail there and they're streaming pretty good so if one of them lifts you let it out and if the other one lifts or it starts to flutter you pull it in Bob's your uncle, Captain Stewart. Yeah, well done, son. That's no, okay. So that's the beauty of the Warren wing sail. I'm standing with my back to the wind, looking straight at what the wind sees on that mast. And there's nice laminar flow all the way around the, the mast. No turbulence, no drag. The tufties, the woolies on the sail are setting nicely. No boom, of course and raked masts so you can have a loose footed sail and keep pretty much equal tension on the leech and the foot just with a single sheet block you now we have up to three sheet blocks in different uh, positions because the boat doesn't have a traveller on the foresail one of the things you have to watch with the gaffs is how they interact with the side stays as you're hoisting you need a helmsman that's going to hold the boat pretty much with the wind over the bow so the gaff's hanging behind the mast as you're hoisting. If it gets out to the side, you can end up hoisting the gaff on the wrong side of the side stay. You have to drop the sail, start over again. That's also, that brings me to another point, which is selecting the right position for the gaff by moving the peak halyard fore or aft of the side stays, you can hoist the gaff forward of the stay or behind it and that puts you in a bit of a grey area because there is the point where the stay is and the gaff's going to be rubbing on it one side or the other. It's about 15 degrees or so where you can't trim these sails exactly where you want them. You have to just pull them slightly one side or the other of the side stay to prevent chafe. Yes. So before we attach the sail to the gaff, we'll put the bridle through the forward hole on the gaff, attach the block, so that's ready to roll. No, we won't even do that. So, get rid of the block. <laughs> you, you try doing this. Hang on a moment. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and thank you for watching.